Hello, everyone, and welcome to Get More Clients. I'm your host, Lynn Whitbeck. Business owners and entrepreneur hire me to ignite winning sales because most are chasing down leads, lack client retention, conversion, and profit. The mission of this show is to educate, inspire, and motivate women around the world to build a robust sales strategy to get more clients because most can't get more clients and haven't a clue why. You'll learn to transform thinking to the client's perspective, eliminate the lengthy chaotic sales cycle to ignite your sales and unleash lasting profits. You will also have an opportunity to connect with me further to see how I can support you beyond today. So I'm going to get started with a story. So the conference is winding down. It had been a great event. Our Sivers demonstration had been constantly attended each and every day. We had made wonderful connections with potential clients, partners, and promoters. And the sessions had been interesting and informative. Still, I was glad to be approaching the end. I was sort of tired and ready to go. And you know how that is as you wind down that conference. But we had that keynote that was still coming up. I was standing over at the far edge of the conference room, sort of going through my mental checklist. We had everything packed and stowed, tucked under the table, ready to go. And once the current speaker was finished, we would be heading into that final keynote. And I was really looking forward to it. Now, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the event director and she started heading my way. Now, we had gotten to know each other uh, quite a bit during the conference. And I thought she was coming over to say goodbye, since you often don't have time in the chaos that follows the keynote and that mass exodus. Uh, But what she said, it left me feeling like a deer in the headlights. You ever feel like that? A deer in the headlights. The event was running ahead of schedule and the keynote speaker had not arrived. She wanted me to fill this imminent gap on the speaker podium. <laughs> so, and I had to get up there in five minutes. Okay, let me, can I just say uppercase OMG and lots of exclamation marks. I don't even know how I managed to say yes. Um, It could have been a squeak or like a bobblehead. Don't know. All I knew is I had five minutes, five minutes to come up with something. And I was spending that first precious minute trying not to hyperventilate. And there was no paper bag in sight. So at four minutes and counting, I grabbed a cocktail napkin and a pen from the closest table. And I kid you not, it was a cocktail napkin. And I wrote purpose, highlights, and segue to keynote. Okay, so purpose, highlights, and segue to keynote. So then what was the purpose or reason we had all attended this conference? You know, why had we come together? What had we learned over the last three days? What were those highlights? the key takeaways. Who had we met and how would we apply our newfound knowledge? Because after all, knowledge is only powerful when it's applied. And what was the keynote about? I quickly, you know, sort of worked through those notes and my time was up. Yep. And I was being called to the podium. Honestly, I felt a little sick. My hands were shaking. My face was flushed. And as I stepped up to the podium and looked out, the things that I had learned about speaking came rushing back to me. And what screamed the loudest was that the audience was filled with receptive listeners. So I launched with a joke that was also the truth. I said, I was told five minutes ago that I would be speaking. So bear with me as I consult my cocktail napkin. And I sort of waved the napkin and the audience laughed. And I waved the cocktail napkin and said, really, this is all I had handy, you know, more laughter. So I had brought them in with me. 
so many people could associate their own feelings of what they would have felt like if they had been pitched into this situation. So I had them with me. And then I briefly shared some of the highlights from the conference, the purpose brought us together, the highlights from day one, day two, and day three. And then I asked the audience to take a moment right now and consider how they would apply the knowledge they had gained on Monday. Now, as I looked out, I looked over to the event director and she gave me the sign to keep going, right? Keep going, keep going, two thumbs up. So I asked the audience to volunteer their intent intentions to take actions and what they would be doing. So after several brave souls shared their thoughts, the event director was still giving me that thumbs up, keep going, keep going. <laughs> so then I asked the audience to share their favorite part of the conference or most insightful session. So had a few more brave souls who stepped up, right? Stepped up to the plate. And then I saw the event director giving me the all clear. All right, wrap it up, right? Wrap it up. So I thanked the audience for their comments and did my wrap up to introduce that keynote speaker before the event director came back on stage and did the formal introduction and the closing for our keynote speaker. You know, what's funny is that as I left the podium, I was actually still shaking a bit. I know my face was still flushed and it had felt like hours, hours. But as I looked at the clock, it told me that only 15 minutes had passed. Relief just surged through me and, and elation. Yeah, elation. I had gone up in front of a packed house with no warning and kept the audience engaged and really put things in perspective for them, the client's perspective, for how they were going to apply the knowledge and move forward. I had tried something new. <laughs> I've never been thrown in front of a huge audience like that with no notice. And even though it was unplanned and honestly, honestly, to some extent terrifying, I was damn proud of myself. So last week, I shared four tips to build presentations that rock and embrace you. Today, I'm going to share why speakers who try new things gain big rewards. Now, and I'm not talking about being pitched in front of an audience with five minutes to spare, okay? So let's dive in. Speaking to an audience of one, a group, or a large audience is a crucial sales skill. Speaking as a form of persuasion to guide the sale forward. By stretching your comfort zone and trying new things, you can become an even more effective speaker than you are today. By the end of today's show, you will know the types of presentations and their associated sales stage and purpose, styles of presentations and finding your right fit, putting purpose, interaction, and location to work for your success. Knowledge is power and applied knowledge is the game changer. By trying new things, such as the style, type, and interactions in your speaking presentations, you gain a deep repertoire where you can leverage the outstanding speaking performances. Types of presentation. So the first step when planning your speech or presentation is to establish your purpose, choose the type, and select the style of your presentation you will deliver. You're going to align your prospects or audience's objection, objectives. <laughs> well, you do want to think about their objections as well, but their objectives with your own goals, right? There's an alignment there. And this is going to help you determine the best type and style of presentation for the circumstances. And there are several common types of presentations and purposes. So I'm going to walk through those for you right now. The first one is informative. So the informative model is often used for early and nurture sales stages and for business gatherings. It's for workshops, summits, quarterly business reviews. These are all examples of informative presentations. My TV show, Get More Clients, is essentially very informative, right? Now, it's a combination of a number of styles, but the purpose of an informative presentation is to explain when, where, and how things should happen. Instructive. 
Instructive presentations can be used effectively to foster your client relationship or establish your industry standing. The purpose of an instructional style is to deliver value, establish your expertise, or confirm your credibility. And there's several ideal examples, such as client implementation of how you would use this or lead magnet webinars. So once again, as you can see, there's a combination that can fit together. Arousing. The arousing style is excellent for your initial sales contact at industry association events. The purpose is to arouse your audience emotions and intellect. So it's really creating the story around a certain problem or search a situation. So you want to get them involved, get them engaged. All right. Persuasive. In sales, the persuasive style is used to sway and convince your audience. And this could be a way to move them forward to learn more about your product or service or to bring in additional influences or decision makers to review and evaluate your offering. The persuasive style is used after connecting with the client, but prior to the final close. And it is also included during the negotiation phase of sales. The purpose is to offer a solution to a controversy, dispute, or problem ending with a call to action to move the sales process forward. The last style is decision-making or type of presentation. I should be saying decision-making while closely linked to the persuasive style. The decision-making style is distinct. The decision-making presentation is used to close the sale or move it ahead in a significant manner. You tell your audience what to do and how to do it, help solve a problem and give them a way to be part of the solution. As noted, the purpose is to move your audience to take your suggested action, such as closing the sale. It's common for presentations to include more than one style, right? So informative, instructive, arousing. I hope I'm doing all of those things, right? And it can be one or two or three, who knows how many styles you're going to incorporate. However, the primary type of the presentation must always align and serve the purpose of your audience. And of course, that is serving you as well. But put your client's perspective in the forefront. All right. Now, let's talk about the styles of presentations. All right, there are six presentation styles. They are instructor, coach, connector, storyteller, visual, and freeform. And once again, you often see several combined. So let's go through these. Instructor, this is used to convey a complex message, just like your teachers and professors did. This style is helpful for breaking down a detailed topic with stories, metaphors, and visual aids to inform your audience. Number two, coach. This style is popular, uh, popular among motivational, energetic, and charismatic speakers. It works best for presenters who are enthusiastic about their topic they are speaking about. In sales, the coaching style can work well with executives who need to be sold on the idea rather than on the details of how it's done. Number three, storytelling. Stories are an important element of every presentation. They make an emotional connection with the audience, and they're often associated with projecting authenticity. With the storytelling style, you need, to, you need that adequate time to tell your stories without taking time away from questions. Number four is connector. Use the connector style to highlight what you have in common with your audience. The style of presentation sets your listener at ease. It elicits feedback on how you're doing in real time and is more of a dialogue than a one-sided presentation. It's ideal early in the sales process for discovering your clients and prospects' pain points, challenges, and goals. Freeform is number five. The freeform style works best in informal situations or where you have a, a thorough knowledge of your products and service. This impromptu style for ghost planning rules or structure. And examples of this is the elevator pitches, networking events, and spontaneous meetings. And number six is visual. This style consists of large and colorful slides with minimal text. And it's perfect 
for those who believe slides should only complement their talking points or what the impact of the images that will be the most effective means of communication. So I recommend including stories in every presentation and try new elements of style and type of presentation. That's what this is all about, trying new things. You can deliver stronger audience engagement and results. And you should always find a way to make sure that audience is engaged and participating in whatever style of uh, presentation that you use. And I'm gonna make one more key point. Since authenticity is important to building trust and credibility with your prospects and clients, you should not adopt a style that is antithetical. So what I mean that it's completely the opposite of who you really are, right? Because it's going to ring false. If the style is in unfamiliar, however, you can practice to build your confidence and assurance when trying something new. All right. So let's talk about the purpose of the presentations. There's various factors you need to consider before setting on the style and type of presentation you will use. The level of interaction you want from your audience, the type of information you will sharing are going to influence your selection. The location and size of the audience are core considerations, as is the level of formality. And the number one factor is absolutely the underlying purpose of the presentation. Focusing on your client's needs is your essential guide so that you can work with them and guide them through the sales process. Your goals and your client's perspective shift over time. And the sales stage will change the focus. So depending on where you're at with that client. So start with your client's viewpoint by asking what the purpose of the presentation is. How do your objectives support the client's desires while moving the sale forward? So creating fresh client-specific think like the client and motivation and emotions. So going through those exercises again, you can revisit some of those past episodes. They're going to link what you have learned through your client discovery and help you clarify the purpose of your presentation. Now let's talk about interaction. Engaging your audience throughout your presentation is crucial to give your listeners a reason to care by stoking their curiosity and interest. Formulate activities, stories, examples, or metaphors to bring your solution to life. So planned interaction must include anticipating questions and objections. All right. Now, let's talk about facts and figures. During your presentation, you must show exactly why, how, how much, and how soon there will be a benefit to your prospect and client. Answer the questions so they can. Remember, what do they want, need, or lack? Why does it matter to them? So they can. Do your research and double check the information. Use your value statements, incorporate reliable research from experts and client testimonials. Now, when you think about the audience, when you reach that stage to present your solution, understanding your audience is monumentally important. All right? This includes that refresh on your client thinking, motivations, and emotions. Identify the unique perspectives of the various stakeholders, influencers, and decision makers in the audience. Make sure you connect with each group by answering how you benefit them so they can. And look for and find convergent points within the group to focus on ideas with the greatest impact. And always answer the decision maker's why, making it the primary focal point of the presentation. And I've got one more note here, sort of a bonus tip regarding your audience. It's absolutely paramount to approach them as receptive listeners. They are there because they want to be there. Let's dive in now to locations and materials. Where and how you're making the presentation can help your performance or hinder it if you are not properly prepared. So work out any bugs, test connectivity, and have a plan to pivot if needed. Support materials for your presentation can add an extra wow factor to your presentation. And these could include a bound case study or white paper, product samples, service demonstration, or a novel element in your planned interaction activity. So 
let's talk about a few of these ideas here that I've just talked about. So being prepared, make sure you've got all the appropriate cables that you're going to need. If you're going into a meeting and you're going to have to connect your laptop to their projector. So this is a common thing. And I can tell you that once this happened to me at a meeting for a major cruise line, I had to go back out to the car and rummage through my suitcase to find the stinking connector and little device that I needed because I use a Mac <laughs> and the presentation was on my Mac. The other thing is to put the presentation on a cup of flash drive, right? Well, and, and, and a backup flash drive, things like that, that you think about ahead, what can go wrong? <laughs> and then be prepared for that. Oh my goodness, that was embarrassing. I still ended up closing that client, by the way. <laughs> but still, and then when you just, it, it was, it's, you know, things happen and it's sort of how you respond and react in that situation that can either alienate or bring the client in where they, yeah, they get it, stuff happens and, you know, you, you take it from there. Now, another point that I wanted to make about this is that when we were talking about those materials, one thing is if you're going to be doing a presentation, um, don't let don't put the sales book on the table so they can just start flipping through it because they're going to be paying attention to that and not to you and the presentation. Therefore, after the presentation, all right, it's absolutely key that they're there and they get to take them at the end, but you don't give them to them at the time of the presentation because you're going to shift their focus. Another idea, and I have used this for years, is bring something that will keep their hands occupied so that they're not trying to reach for their phone or look for it, especially when you're presenting to a small group or even a larger group. Um, do something that's going to you know, really direct their attention to you. And there's a lot of ways that you can do to set that up. One thing you can do to, as an icebreaker at the beginning of a meeting is you can actually put like a little, um, some cards on the table where there's like you do some questions, like everybody think of the top three things for this and the, everybody on the table writes them down how, you know, and then you go around to the tables or you choose a few tables to tell you what they are. Now that gets people's hands and attention on the topic. That's all related, right? One thing I've used in uh, meetings is believe it or not, Play-Doh. And I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I would custom brand, um, put little labels on them and I'd bring the Play-Doh in I, I, that would be sitting on the table. I'd ask people to open it up and I would relate it how we could custom configure the solution to fit their needs. Now, I used this later in the process when I was working to that final stage to then move into negotiation for a, a meeting and uh, for the presentation for the sales strategy. So that was how I would use that. And it was great because at the end, there was always somebody who had some children at home and they would take all of the Play-Doh. <laughs> So it was a great way to keep people's hands off their phones. So as you think about that, once again, you'll notice that when I told that story, I told you how I use the Play-Doh to highlight how they could custom configure their solution because I would ask everybody to like make a dog or make a cat and everyone's would look completely different. And that's then how I would highlight how we could custom configure the solution so it worked for all the different departments and all the different stakeholders. So it was completely tied in with a core selling point and a competitive edge of our product. And yet at the same time, kept their hands off their phones and kept them completely engaged. And they were really engaged in that conversation because it started their mind thinking, okay, wow, I need to pay attention. I want to listen to this. So there's lots of tricks and tools that you can use for that. Just make sure it makes sense with your topic and your solution and the client's perspective that must be in the forefront. So now here's another tip I have, and that is to re rehearse. So practice, 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 rehearsing in front of an audience, such as your coworkers, your friends or family is going to deliver a powerful benefit to your perf performance. And they may notice things you didn't even realize you were doing, such as awkward body language, poorly paced speaking or distracting habits. So be sure to have them ask you questions and present objectives, um, objections. Now in this case, I want objections so that you can, and you can also film yourself. 
um, like a live rehearsal. And then you can review and critique your own performance. Now, one thing is to remember, you're always going to be your worst critic. So having somebody else getting a group of girlfriends together with a glass of wine and doing it together is going to be more effective for you so that you can hear that outside perspective. I used to get the room at the library and do my presentation, make sure I had all the equipment things set up, all the different cables. And that helped me do that, you know, because, you know, you're not doing it every single day. And so I would have my dad would be in my audience and he would be great because he would be throwing out the questions and objections. He'd even do some heckling <laughs> to try to shake my confidence and my cool, but it really helped me go through. And he would also have insights about things that didn't quite make sense or it didn't flow very well. So when you do that, it's going to make a big impact for your confidence and assurance, especially when you are trying new things and working through the learning curve. Preparation and practice have enormous positive impact with your speaking. With practice, I just said you gain confidence and it gives you a gift of exponentially boosting your results. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And my purpose is for you to get more clients. Bottom line, don't make this harder than it has to be. Sales should be a win-win. And on behalf of Petite Queen, I've carved out a limited number of time slots to invite you to hop on and ignite your sales call with me to see what's working, not working, and what you would love to have working. I'm going to see how I might further support you in effectively generating more leads and converting more sales and fulfilling on your promise as a brand and organization. The fastest way to success is to assure people know that they matter. And the best way to make this happen is to build a consistent sales strategy to acquire, convert, and capitalize on every lead. And you will find growing your business is easy and lucrative. So today I shared why speakers who try new things will gain big rewards. The key is for you to implement these steps to stop wasting your time, energy, and resources. You have the opportunity to jump in and get the support you need for true success. So say yes to you and get on a call with me. I am really, truly gifted at this, and you deserve a shortcut to your success with the right support. You can go to pdq.link forward slash win win. Our Get More Clients programs are designed for immediate on-the-fly implementation and for individuals committed to taking action to move their business forward. To learn more about our Get More Clients programs, you can visit our website at Petite to Queen. You can also connect with me on our website and to stay current on all of our insightful advice, breakthrough advantages, amazing resources, and never miss an episode of Get More Clients sign up for our weekly wisdoms newsletter at petitequeen.com. Now, next week on Get More Clients, I will share eight must-haves to boost your confidence when presenting. So I will see you next week on Get More Clients.